You have just dialed in to the center of the grilling universe. That's right. We're red hot and thankful. It's Thanksgiving on the grill today. We're spit roasting some Cornish game hens. These things are amazing. We got a pinto bean and rice pilaf. And for dessert, we don't got pumpkin pie. No, we don't got pumpkin pie. We got pumpkin bread pudding. We're cooking that up on the grill and it's going to be fantastic. That's right, and I'm throwing a tailgate party in the backyard. Tail in the backyard, I'm out of here. To the grill. I'd just like to take a minute first to be thankful for the crew that we have, so. That's plenty. Bread pudding is what we're doing today, okay? This is a pumpkin bread pudding. We're not making pumpkin pie, we're making bread pudding, okay? This is very simple. It's a combination of custard, which is eggs and milk. Simple as that. Mix them up, throw in our pumpkin, throw in our sugar. We got dessert, we got some bread. Let's make it happen. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. This is the future of this chicken to make our custard. Okay, add a little heavy cream, about a half a cup, about a cup of 2% milk, or homogenized milk is fine. You're gonna whisk this stuff up. Go slow, otherwise you're gonna end up with this all over your shirt, okay? Okay, to this, let's add some white sugar. That's about a cup, about a half cup of brown sugar. We got some molasses here. Very thick blackstrap molasses, straight in. That's about a tablespoon of cinnamon. And we're gonna whisk this up. As soon as this is combined, this is our custard base. Okay, our custard's ready. We could actually say this is our custard's last stand, but we won't, will we? We wanna cut some bread up. We're gonna cut it into chunks. You want day-old bread, because it's gonna absorb more moisture. The less moisture in the bread, the more moisture will go into it, okay? Got our bread knife, watching our fingers. Boom, straight through. Roughly an inch size cube is what you need. How's that? How easy is that? That's beautiful. We have some pre-cut bread here just to make our lives easier. In this part, we have no tools for this apart from our hands. What we're gonna do is we're gonna soak all our bread right in the custard. Make sure it gets good and saturated, okay? Because otherwise it's just gonna be, you know, grilled bread. And that's, a, that's not that great of dessert. We've got a problem here. What's pumpkin bread pudding without pumpkin? It's just bread pudding, right? Okay. Let's add our pumpkin puree to this. I should have done this a little bit earlier, but it doesn't matter. We're mashing up with our hands. It's gonna find its way into the bread. Oh yeah. Anybody else wanna try it? This, this is a... No. No, never, no, no, it's okay. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. We got something called a spring form pan. Now what we want to do, we want to make sure it's lubricated on the sides. We're going to put a little bit of butter, a little bit of sugar. It's going to increase the sweetness and the richness of the dessert, but it's also going to prevent it from sticking to the sides. It's going to come out of the pan beautifully. Mmm. What does that remind you of? can't say that. Okay, that's all right. We can think it, though. This won't rise much, by the way, so you can fill it very close to the top. Okay. Finish this off with a few nuts. These are pecans, toasted pecans. A Little bit more sugar, just to add to that sweet. It's also gonna create a nice little glaze on the top, hopefully. And just a little brush of butter around the edges. That's gonna seep into it and it's gonna taste fantastic. Don't use margarine, okay? Margarine is, is the devil's grease. Okay, and with the addition of a little bit more animal fat, this puppy's ready to rock. What do you think about that, Wade? Yeah, That's yeah, nice, yeah. huh? Fancy a bite? Oh, yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to wait. But in the meantime, I'm gonna check out Melissa. She's out in the back. What's happening with her tail? It's
Thanksgiving weekend and you and the boys are heading out to the football game on Sunday afternoon. So why not round up a couple of trucks and have a tailgating party in the parking lot? Tailgating parties have been around forever and what it basically consists of is you having a pre-game party in the back of your truck. The beer should flow like water, the music should be really loud, and everyone should just focus on getting pumped up for the game. Later on I'm going to show you how to make beer, broiled, bratwurst to throw on the grill when you get there. So stick around football fans because I'll be back after halftime. Okay, we're continuing to prep here for a Thanksgiving barbecue special here. But I think we have to pause for a moment and just reflect on the tree of Thanksgiving, right? It's all about the family. So having said that, let's prep. Uh, I'm gonna need a couple of those. Great thing though, we can all be thankful. They're all going home at the end of the day, right? We got another 364 before we have to see him again. Okay, so having said that, I've chopped up a bunch of zucchini here. I've taken them down to about half an inch thick, nice big chunks for the grill. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to salt them. I've got some coarse sea salt here. Using sea salt is a really good choice because they haven't added iodine to it. So we've got this all doctored up with our sea salt. Dump it into a colander. And what the salt's going to do, it's going to extract some of the moisture. So when it hits the grill, it's not bleeding its liquid all over the place. You know, it's going to be a nice, tight, compact vegetable, well seasoned. Okay. Let's get on with our chickens here. These are actually not chickens. They, uh, they're a Cornish rock hen, which is a cross between the Plymouth rock chicken and the Cornish hen, or the Cornish chicken. What we're going to do is we're going to season this inside and out with a little bit of salt and pepper. A little salt, a little pepper, and it's all good. Let's trim off the fat here because let's take the fat off at the tip of the neck and any other, any other places where it seems to be uh, too abundant. That's pretty good for these guys. They're fairly lean in comparison to a regular chicken. Okay? You've got to tie these things up so their legs aren't splaling all over the place. Splaling? Okay. Splaling. That's right. That's the technical term. The legs do splail. Okay? We've got some string. Cut off a little length of it. About a foot or so. Give yourself plenty of, plenty of rope to hang yourself. We'll wrap it around the legs here. We'll pull tight. And just make a regular bow knot, okay? Because you want to get out of this at the end before you actually eat it. There's one. What we can do now is with these wings, you're going to take them back, dislocate its shoulder, and tie them back. So that's perfect. That's ready to be thrown on the skewer. Okay, we got to remove these babies. Okay, you killed my brother. Now you must pay. There we are. And you slide this in. Make sure you get these into the meat, otherwise, as the rotisserie turns, your birds aren't going to turn. They're just going to sit on the stick and get burnt on one side. That's not what we want. Okay, I think this guy's in pretty good. Okay, guys, I like a nice tasty bird as much as the next guy. Ooh. But I think we can make this even better. What we're going to do is we're going to make an herb marinade bath, basically. It's a basting liquid for our bird on the grill. Get it out there, brush it every couple of minutes. It's going to taste fantastic. What we have... We have a cup and a half of loosely packed herbs, okay? You can put parsley, cilantro, thyme, rosemary, whatever you have, you know, whatever your girlfriend has kicking around or whatever's in your garden. Okay, that's straight into the bowl. We've got some oil. That's about a half a cup. We've got about a quarter cup of lemon juice. This is going to give a nice tang to it, but it's also going to break down the meat fibers and make this bird so tender you won't believe it, man. Okay, we got that. We got about four cloves of garlic roughly chopped. We got some Dijon mustard, okay? Spoon that right in. Yeah, that's the good stuff. We've got salt. It's much healthier to cook with salt than it is to add it afterwards. Okay, we're gonna put some freshly ground pepper here. Okay, that should be enough. That should give it just enough kick. Okay, and we're gonna whisk this up. Okay. This base is done. This is going to be fantastic. We're going to take the birds outside. We're going to base this every 15 minutes or so. These are going to be fantastic. But first, before we do that, I think we should go to the backyard. Let's check to see what's up with Melissa's tail, right? 
All right, boys, we're back and we're cooking with meat and beer. Now, one of the most important things to remember at a tailgating party is the food. You don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it on site. So today, I'm going to show you a very simple recipe that's really easy to do and stays true to the spirit of the game. It's called beer broiled bratwurst. All you need is some German brats, a little bit of water, a couple of beer, and some red onion. All right, boys, so to prepare it before time, you want to cut up your red onion and throw it in a pot. You want to get it nice and brown before you're ready to put your water in. Once you have it nice and brown like mine here, you're ready to throw some water in and some beer. Now you want to boil up your water and by the magic of television, we have pre-boiled water. Woohoo! Just going to add it to the mixture here. And this is about three cups of water. And next we're ready to pour in our beer. Ooh, this looks great, doesn't it? Check that out. And number three. I think the cameraman's getting a little thirsty here. And once you're finished with the liquid, we want to wait for it to boil. The aroma coming off here with the onions mixed with the beer is amazing. So we're going to throw our brats in. We are all set to do that. We've got four here today. We're going to plop them in and have a bratwurst hot tub party. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to stir these around in here and make sure they have lots of room to move around. It's going to take about three minutes to cook. It doesn't take very long at all, boys. You can enjoy a beer while you're waiting for them. And we're going to know they're finished easily because they're going to be a light gray color. So when we come back, we're ready to party. We're smoking it, chopping it, slashing it, and grilling here on Red Hot Ready. All right, boys, we're back and we're ready to start our tailgate party. Tiger rule! <laughs> So we brought our brats in a nice resealable plastic bag on ice, all ready to throw on the grill. Now Tom's cooking them up here, and while he's doing that, I'm going to give you a couple tips of things that you have to have to make a good, nice, smooth tailgating party. Now you want to bring some jumper cables with you, just in case you get in a jam or someone else does. Secondly, TP, that good stuff we call toilet paper, is always a good idea. And it is definitely the most valuable player at any tailgating party because you know what? You don't want to be caught with your pants down in a porta potty with no toilet paper. Next, you want to make sure that you bring a nice big chest full of ice because there's no excuse for warm beer. Bring a great big chest full and you're cruising. And lastly, you want to make sure that you pack your rain gear because when everyone else is wussing out in their cars and trucks, you're going to be the one doing the grilling. Sunday's coming up around the bend, boys, so pack it in and head to the field. Go, Go Tigers. Tigers! Ow! Woo! From Hamburg to Yorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot Ready. Hey guys, if you're anything like me, the idea of your folks showing up in an hour and a half for dinner is giving you the heebie-jeebies. This requires a fail-safe plan. Thank you, Tom. <sighs> the pause that refreshes. Okay, we've had our cake in here, our bread pudding that is, in the oven. Well, this is an oven, isn't it? But that's what we're doing with it. It's in our grill, but we're cooking with indirect heat, which means we've turned off one side of the grill, the other side is producing the heat to bake our product. Okay, it's been in here for about an hour and a half at about 350 degrees, so this should be just about ready. Voila, that's a thing of beauty, man. I think this is pretty much there, but one way to test it out is grab yourself some sort of pricky device here, okay? Slide it in, if it comes out dry, you know your cake's done, okay? So this is looking really good. This is gonna be delicious. This, at least this one element is gonna impress your family. So you wanna take a look at that? Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, see ya. It's all about the meat. <laughs> so let's get this chicken on and get rolling with the pilaf. Okay, insert this into your handy dandy rotisserie. Before we do anything, we want to baste this. It's a lot easier to baste a bird that isn't already rotating, okay? Loading it up. Don't worry about the stuff that hits the grill. That's just going to burn off. You can scrub that off a little later on. Chicken's in bondage. Okay, let's crank this on. We're going to close this down. We're going to cook this for at least an hour. We're going to check it then. If it's not ready, maybe give it another 25 minutes or so. And once again, we're at about 350 degrees, which is the perfect cooking temperature for a chicken. It's all about the meat. Oh. Moving right on to our pilaf. You might ask yourself, what is a pilaf? Well, for me, it's when you walk into somebody in the bathroom, but that's a whole different thing. <laughs> We've got about two tablespoons of butter. 
and we're going to toss our rice right in here. This is actually what makes it a pilaf, is the fact that we don't have anything to stir it with. So I'm going to have to shake this around. This is going to do just as well. Okay, the, the idea is that you're sauteing your ingredients first before you're actually adding the water. This is going to impart a nice nutty flavor to it. I'm going to let that go for just a second. We're going to get onto our whipped cream here. We're going to have a coffee flavored whipped cream going on with our cake that we've just taken out of the oven. Okay, we've got our heavy cream here. We're going to sweeten this up, but we're going to do it a little bit later. If you add the sugar at the beginning, it's going to reduce the volume of your actual finished product. Okay? The idea when you're whisking this is you're incorporating air into your cream. You're going to suspend your oxygen molecules and the fat molecules, and it's going to hold that way. Okay, this is great. How many opportunities do you get to beat your cream on TV? Okay, this is almost there. Look at that. It's starting to form some peaks. It's time to add our sugar, okay? We got about two tablespoons of sugar. We got some very finely ground espresso powder. Try to spread that as evenly as possible over there, otherwise you're going to end up with big, huge clumps of caffeine. Which is fine for some students, maybe. That is a thing of beauty. Hmm, creamy, coffee, sweet, everything we want. From Hamburg to Yorburg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot Ready. Okay guys, we're making our pilaf. Try as you can, it can never make you pilaf. Okay, look, we got this nicely sauteed, it's browning off a little bit, it's not gone too far. All we have to do now is add our chicken stock. You can cook it in water, but chicken stock is going to add a lot more depth of character to this. And you know, any pea that's laughing has got a lot of depth of character. Ooh, that was bad, I'm sorry. And when we come back, we're going to add the rest of the ingredients to the pilaf. We're going to grease up our vegetables, throw them on the grill, and then we're going to check our birds. This is going to be a fantastic meal. Your parents are going to love you, baby. It's all about the meat. <laughs> Okay, we're back, guys. Let's check on our hens. These birds look great, okay? If you want a little bit more color, though, and you don't have the time, this is what we're doing. Industrial grilling. Look at that. Instant crispy skin. No one knows the difference. Okay, ba-boom. And there we are. Those are two hens. What do you think? That's a bit all right, ain't it? Okay, let's get these out of the way and finish off our pilaf. Okay, check this out. The grains of rice here, they've completely absorbed the moisture. We're at a point now, it's just before where it would stick. Let's add our beans in. These are pre-cooked beans. That's why we didn't add them when we put the rice in. If you are using pre-cooked or soaked beans, put them in when you put the rice in. Adding to that, we got some scallions. These are gonna give a nice herbal bite to it. And some pine nuts. And you guess it, pine nuts come from pine cones. Tastes fantastic. Okay, we'll give this a little stir. I think we need to add a little bit of pepper to this. Crack black, it's best. Or black crack, depending on how you look at it. We're gonna take this off, we're gonna cover it, let the rest of the moisture absorb into it, and this is gonna be fantastic in about five minutes. Okay, we got our veg, a little salt. Shut up. And we got a little bit of oil, just so they don't stick to the grill. And we got some freshly chopped herbs. We got thyme, tarragon, a little bit of rosemary. It's all good. Use your hands, toss it around a bit. Boom, straight onto the grill. Okay, this isn't gonna take long at all. Maybe five minutes to get nice and caramelized. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay, what we need to do now, no hen is complete without a little bit of gravy, is it? Okay, crank some heat up here on our pan. Okay, add just a little bit of oil. We're adding bacon as well, so we don't need to add that much oil because there's going to be a lot of fat rendered from this bacon. Okay. Okay, let this saute for a few minutes with some shallots. And can I get a plate in here, please? Thanks, Tom. We're going to check out our veg here. These are looking pretty good. We're getting some nice grill marks. I told you they'd cook fast. Beautiful. Hey, Melissa, you want to give me a hand in here? 
You like the yellow ones or the green That's ones? Great. Um, I'm not particularly fond of the green ones. You don't? Mm -mm. I don't like them. How come? What's the problem with them? Yeah, I've had some bad experiences in the past. You've had some bad experiences with green zucchinis? Well, say no more. Let's call say it no zucchini. More. Okay. This looks great. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic. So, what's next? The folks are going to be well pleased. Okay, this is coming along great. Tom, the cream oh, man. Great. Okay. Cream up the cake here. Ooh, that looks good. Just, just mm. throw it on there. I'm gonna shut this down. This is throwing a lot of heat now. You want to be really liberal with your cream. Just slap it on there. Mmm. I love the way you slap it, baby. So good. Okay, we're gonna add some red pepper to our red pepper gravy. This is ancho chili pepper. This is from southwestern United States or Mexico. It's very pungent, earthy, almost a, a minerally sort of flavor. You got that smell? Straight in. You stir that around, you can smell the aroma coming off. Don't get your eyes too close to this. Because it's Look at the nice color that's taking on. It's beautiful. It's like a brick red. It looks great. And it smells great. Yeah. <coughs> you see what I mean? You get too close to that. It goes right up your nose. Your eyes start watering. You start salivating. Other things. Oh, never mind. I'm a little stuck on the cream here. Now we're gonna add a little bit of flour to this. This is what makes a roux out of this. This is what's gonna thicken our gravy. Okay. A roux is equal parts fat. Oh. Equal parts fat and flour. Okay, John, would you like me to slap your meat on the plate while you're doing that? You can slap my meat anywhere. Ooh. Just gonna pick these babies up, throw them over here. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of stock to this now. That's totally impressive. We should have a little bit of red wine around here. Where's the wine, man? Here's the wine. Straight in. Ah, that looks good. Give it a stir. Before you know it, we're gonna be eating gravy. Stick it onto the back of the spoon, it's perfect. Oh, that's spicy. That's some spicy gravy. It's beautiful. We're gonna take it here. I'm gonna dump it right over this. Oh, that looks so good. These hens are just dying to be eaten now. What do you think about that? Mm, smells great. Let's try a piece there. Mm, I want a piece with lots of sauce, because there's just no other way. We well, you know why that is because it is red hot and ready. The home of smoky good eats. Thanks, Dollface. We'll see you next time. See you later.